I'd like to call the Blackstone Millville Regional School Committee meeting on Thursday, June 23rd at 7 o'clock to order. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start with our introduction of members. <coughs> Bill Chaplin, Blackstone. Jane Reggio, Millville. Will Coppolis, business manager. Joanne Watson, Blackstone. Steve Tringali, Millville. Tara Larkin, Millville. And Wendy Greenstein, Blackstone. Alan Himmelberger, Superintendent. Dave Thompson, Assistant Superintendent. Okay, we have two public forums tonight. This is the first one. Would anybody like to speak? If you could just state your name and where you're from. Uh, Stephanie Saradarian, 36 Quaker Street, Melville. Um, we up. are here. What's that? You can sit. Okay. Um, we're here, oh, we're all fifth grade parents uh, of Millville students. Um, we would just like to know what the status is. Um, we've only heard rumors. We haven't heard anything officially from anyone of what the status is for next year. Status meaning? How many classes there'll be. And you're, you want to know Millville? Yes. There is, in fifth grade, one class. Okay. Um, it's the of, it's the only large class out of yeah. all of the three elementary schools. Yeah, our our concern as parents are there's a you know very dynamic group. Um, they don't always do well as a whole. Um, that has been historically throughout their entire um, lives at Millville Elementary. So we're just very concerned as to how that's going to play out. Um, you know and I'd also like to know there's a high percentage of IEPs at what percentage is it where you need to have a special education teacher do you does anyone know that well I, th I think we have to be careful when we talk about IEPs because that's yeah. that's uh, personal information um, if you'd like well to. it's yeah. also personal when my child's right. in the class and right but I think we just have to be I, cautious of what, what we're I, saying when we talk about special yeah. education. I'm not talking specifically about Thank anyone you. so I think Thank I'm you. okay Cer certainly um, we share the leadership team staff mm. shares the exact same concerns that US parents have dr. Hawhey the teachers dr. Thompson um, all of us and we will make sure that we provide the supports that are necessary and needed so that we can have a successful year. Um, th there is there's a, an awful lot of literature and research and, and white papers about class size and certainly um, several decades back class size and building transitions were the, were the predictors of how well students would do. And we now know that that has changed and, and those two items are, are down the list. And certainly we know that uh, the quality of the instruction is by far number one. We know that having a curriculum that is aligned and is, is taught in scope and sequence properly is number two. And we also know that um, a child's um, economic status from the home is very important. Mm -hmm. And so we, we certainly, uh, as, as a leadership team, try and do the very best we can for all 1,750 of our students. Every single one of them is important to me, and um, it, it is, those, are, uh, those are my students. You know, I have three children of my own, but I have 1,750 now. And the, the, the number that are in fifth grade in Millville are every bit as important as the high school biology class, every bit as important as the middle school math I, class. I have no, I have no doubt. Um, my other question would be, so next year, one classroom, yep. um, things don't go well. What happens then? Does, is there any Well, I, I believe that, um, as I said, that we need to make sure we have the supports in place mm -hmm. so that everybody is on the same page and everybody is, is ready to 
expect the very best from our students. Uh -huh. And and that that means support from from teachers, it means support from staff, it means support from the home to make sure that students um, are able to achieve in a an environment that maybe they haven't had before. But it's we we need to make sure that we respond so that we do our very best right from day one to make sure that everything is as good as we can possibly make it. And you have my um, steadfast promise on that. And, and I, I don't want to anticipate a problem. I want to make sure that we have everything in place so that there are not problems. And, and so I think that we will continue to, to work towards that end. Um, and, and I think that that's in, in all classes, you know, and, and we have, you know, hundreds of classes throughout the district, and this one certainly has a lot of attention. And because of that, we will make sure that we do whatever it takes uh, to make sure that we have a smooth, achieving classroom that is engaging to every one of those students. Um, I can't I cannot stress that enough yeah. I just um, also as well in the slideshow that was um, presented at um, the Millville town meeting when we voted um, it said there was a long list of, of cuts that were going to be made one teacher being in Millville elementary being one of them which I assume was the fifth grade um, are all of those cuts being made is it depending on if the budgets the 63,000 is passed in Millville yeah. what is the status on that if yeah. you could I, touch I, base? I can't thank you enough for bringing that up because I know there is a lot of misinformation out there that 63,000 is part of that and I'll never use those terms again that additional contribution because it, it minimizes the total budget and the total budget, yes, is made up in a regional district of three distinct components, two of which are not grounded in reality of, of 2016. They were part of Ed Reform from 1993, which is why there is such a discrepancy in the state's funding of local districts. And that 63 is part of 183 which is part of 467, which is part of 2.561, which is part of 7.833, which is part of 10,900. All of these things go together. And we, <clears throat> the 63,000, I think I'll do this differently next year and, and Mrs. Cobb will, will make sure that we do present it differently from day one because to focus on that 63 as being the linchpin or what is going to be the fulcrum that's going to balance is totally the farthest thing from the truth. That's one small piece. Yes, it's 2% of an increase to Millville's assessment, mm -hmm. but it's one small piece of what goes into the entire budget. And it's, it's everything from salaries, to benefits, to supplies, to, to technology, to curriculum enhancements, to instructional materials, to professional development. It's just one small sliver. And, and so to isolate it and say, the hopes and dreams of our district will ride on this 63 is not fair. Now, certainly it's, it was deemed to be a part of the budget as we planned it, just to remember that back in February when we brought a preliminary budget to the committee, that was a $23 million and 59000 budget. That's what would have been the perfect budget to move everything forward next year. We know the towns have limited resources and we have to try and work to make it all fit. So the school committee adopted in March an adopted budget of $22 million, $585,635. That was already reduced from the preliminary budget of $473,712. That budget, the adopted budget, represented a 3.6% increase, which is healthy, which is certainly more than two and a half, which is what towns can assess, but certainly 
less than what a lot of other districts get. So because that number was deemed too high, we further reduced it by 550,000. And, and those cuts, those first two cuts were a lot of staff and a lot of stuff that, we're, that we need to move us forward. And the, the bottom line is that we have lost an awful lot of students to other forms of education as parents vote with their feet. And the numbers in there are not nice to have things. They are part of a strategy to enhance our offerings so that we can tell parents, your child can do very well in this district. And it's to keep pace with all that is being offered in other um, forms of education. And so we don't want to step back. We know that we have been funded unevenly over the past 10 or so years where some budgets were reduced. And, and we saw the decline in enrollment and, and the change in leadership because of it. And so I, I, I can't emphasize it enough that that 63 is part of that 22 million. I, I understand and, that. And I that's, and that's a, a rock bottom number. Yeah. And, and certainly if the, if the town can't support that 63 on Monday night, then the school committee has some hard choices to make. So the, uh, the slideshow that was done, Millville, the one teacher role was a part of those cuts. Are all the other cuts being done as well? That was part of that 550 mm -hmm. to reduce, to get to a 1.1% a increase in the general fund budget. And, that, and we try, and this is, this is something that's important to state, we're not in the business of pink slipping staff. We're not in the business of, of upsetting people's livelihoods and lives. And what needs to be stated is that there's a charge if we do that, and that's called unemployment. And regional districts, unlike municipalities, bear that burden entirely. And two years ago, that was a in excess of $100,000. And it took two years to get through that so that now unemployment costs are virtually nothing. But we have to plan for it each year. But we don't certainly want to plan for um, laying off and, and pink slipping staff. Of because not. that's what is the lifeblood mm -hmm. of any school district. You know, staff that cares about our kids every day and does hard work. You know, I sent an email out to staff at the end of the year a couple of days ago, and I said, you know, thanking everyone for the year, that character is what you do and no one's looking. Mm -hmm. I said, and we lead the league in character. I, I guess I just want to ask again, are all of those cuts being, being made? It was, if, if, you're, if you're looking for if there were cuts in Blackstone, the answer is yes. There was I'm a second grade cut. Because I'm just trying to read those, through that, that if question. All of the, yes. Well, there's nothing to read through. It's yes. just a question. I want to know if all of them were made. Mm -hmm. That's yes. my question, and it's not being answered. The, no, the answer is yes, they okay. are, well, and and we've had it. and we've had since then over the last week or two, we've had a lot more uh, shifting of personnel, mm -hmm. and so we have to adapt to that as well um, as we move forward. Um, but we have a budget at twenty-two million thirty-five that is is so uh, unforgiving that if we get any sort of emergency, whether it's another four feet of snow or two weeks of sub-zero, we don't have the ability to, to manage that within that budget. And so then as we go through the year, Mrs. Cobb has to adjust it and see what we don't spend or what we postpone. Um, so a 1.1% increase, which is what the 22 represents, is, is a very, very extremely tight budget. But we have made all of the cuts. We hope that we don't have to make any more. You know, to have to go further would really um, put us behind all of the things that we're trying to do around upgrading our curriculum, around improving our technology, around giving students that leg up uh, so that they can compete when they leave us. And, and so, um, you know, it's, it's something that we try and do as fairly and as equitably uh, across th the district, and, and I, I know that there is some, I'm learning the history after two years, I know there is some very uh, parochial, very proud 
uh, people on, in, in both towns. But I have to look at it as one educational community and, and to do the best that we can for every single student. And, and I apologize if it hasn't been as forthcoming. Um, I know that um, it has been extremely hectic for everybody <coughs> in the last few weeks of, of uh, the school year, um, us included. But, but that is where we are. And we certainly have, you know, more information that we can that we can show. But that's exactly where we are right now. Okay. That 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 63, which I'm going to start to have nightmares about, is only one small piece, I and understand. and it doesn't give us anything except allows us to hold serve where we are. Dave, it, sorry. Just, you just, want to jump in? Yeah, I've been trying to jump in. He's so shy. I am. I'm very shy. But just to, just to go back, you know, that first reduction of 473000 there were $283,000 worth of personnel that was reduced in that. Those are personnel that we needed to keep pace. Those were additions put in. Uh, extra um, FTEs at the elementary level, so we're using our speech and language people to actually, you know, or sorry, our reading teachers to actually teach reading instead of just doing some sort of special, for instance. That's an excellent example of how we're not using people appropriately because we do not have enough people. So that really represents that first round of cuts. So almost $300,000 worth of personnel. In the second 550, out of that was $400,000 worth of salaries and personnel. And that, for the most part, is people who are retiring who, are, who we, unfortunately we are not able to replace. Yeah. Okay, um, so there are reductions across the district, okay, and the class size has gone up about, on average, at least one, one student per class across the district, okay. So maybe that's, uh, unfortunately, there's some that are more noticeable than others, and we're talking to parents of those right now, but it is across the board. I looked at it earlier today. It's 1 to 1.5 in each grade level going across the district. So just, um, just to recap on her question, mm -hmm. um, you did ask if they were cut. So the first round was 300000 in personnel, the second was 283000 So a total of around 700000 in just personnel under. cuts yeah. across the district. Okay. Does that answer That's your a question? Lot. And those are not people that we don't need. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if there's some confusion here. I right. don't want teachers to be cut if no. that's, you know. No, well, I, I, I don't think, I don't think any of us so, right. do. And I'm, you know, and my job is to try to bring the programming in. And unfortunately, education is a labor intensive. You need to have people to provide the programming. Yeah. Um, so we are, you know, to the bone. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other piece I want to answer is, is the special ed piece. Mm -hmm. uh, there are not regulations for inclusion. Okay. okay. Uh, the general rule is you can't have more more than half of a classroom be, um, you know, students on ed plans. For people, uh, students who are pulled out for, for you know, in specialized mm -hmm. classrooms, sub-separates as we say, there are specific regulations for that. But okay. you can have, if you had, you know, 20 in a classroom, up to 10 could be inclusion students. Now the other side of that is that, you know, we are moving to an inclusion model where the special ed teacher is in the classroom with it, so it gives you two teachers. And Dr. Hahi and I have had a conversation about that, trying to maximize that model <coughs> in this particular situation. And some other things that, you know, just throwing ideas against the wall. That's one of the things we will be working on this summer. So, um, you know, we don't have one person in that classroom by themselves. Yes. Um, you know, the one thing, and. Mr. Hilmerberger spoke to it. The most important piece to children making progress is the quality of the teacher in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to say publicly that you have probably uh, one of yeah. the best teachers mm -hmm. invented yes. leading that classroom. Um, and, and I take a little solace with that. And as a teacher myself who taught 32 in a classroom for three years, okay. it's tough, but it's doable. Okay. So okay. just to and recap can, again from my I, Can I Go ahead. try one Go too? For it. Um, I think. Um, to get specific to your question, Sorry, I'm um, blocking this you said that it was posted, you know, cuts were, were posted, and I think you've heard that we've had several rounds of that. Mm -hmm. It's still a fluid process until we know our actual number. So until yeah, understand. Monday, until the, the Senate and House and Governor vote on their dollars, and, you know, that's not going well for us right now either. Mm. It's very, so you can't. I don't I would caution you to go back to a slide from you know the first of May and say you said you were making these 12 cuts you only made 11 
Um, it's a, it's, it is still somewhat fluid, but those cuts were made um, based on discussions amongst this committee well before we went to any town meeting, well before you know any dollars were um, given to us from the Senate budget or the House budget or anything like that. So we knew we couldn't go to the towns and ask for an additional million dollars. We knew that. So we made some tough, really tough decisions. But they've been those same decisions um, from the get-go with a little bit of fluidity as the money has changed. Yeah, well, I, I just asked the question because the, you know, the slides presented. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I, the only one I know of is my daughter's grade. So I'm just asking. I only have one other question. Um, my husband had actually asked it and I don't know if it was ever answered because he hasn't received any responses. Um, now, the school choice option within the district, um, is that ever going to be discussed as an option to school choice between Blackstone and Millville if regionalization Didn't doesn't pan through? Or? We did. That, the way that the school choice um, works in Massachusetts mm -hmm. is it's between districts, and districts have to approve if they are going to receive students. Yeah. Um, any district, whether it's a regional or a municipal standalone, can choice students out. That's the parents' um, uh, option, yeah. but only to districts that have where school committees have accepted either a, a blanket number or per grade number yeah. to be able to choice in. In within a, re a district, a regional district, there is no choice between the towns. The district is the region. Okay. So there the can district. never be an option for Millville to go to Blackstone, Blackstone to go to not Millville as a school choice option. Right. No, that's okay. that would not be that piece of the law. Right. Is you would need to change the regional agreement. So you would have to change the regional agreement. Regional agreement to include the school choice between the two towns. Exactly. Sort of thing okay. to have. We that's have how, yeah. we have students who choice from Uxbridge, say, to come to us. Yeah, that I understand. We have students that go to Bellingham. And there's a myriad of reasons why parents and students make that choice. Yeah. Um, we, we, we do accept and, and, and have about a little over 40 this year that have choiced in, but we also choice out uh, a little, all close to 80. So on balance, that's a negative number that the yeah. towns have to hit on their cherry sheets before we factor in all of the money. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny how choice works because most districts who are a destination district don't ha don't need choice. Yeah. So if you're, um, you know, a, a Wellesley or a Weston, you don't choice in anybody because you don't need the revenue. Mm -hmm. But that would be certainly where someone would want to go. Yeah. Um, you're I specifically think, ask, asking answer. between Blackstone and Millville. Yeah, yeah right. that, that I'm, I'm specifically yeah. asking. And the regional yeah, agreement between. basically says that between K through five. five. Yeah. You're educated in your If you're in Millville, you go to Millville. Blackstone, you go to Blackstone. Yes. Unless it's a specialized program around special education. Yeah. And, and it's pretty, it's so clear if, as clear. Yeah, if regionalization didn't doesn't go anywhere, it, it stays the way it is, it, will that be ever explored as an option to change? So right. they can go K through five. One of the biggest factors of school choice yeah. is money. Yeah. Um, so when, when we lose a student to another town, our chapter 70 money for that student goes with them. Yeah. So if someone is choosing from Millville to Blackstone, mm -hmm. there's no, there, there, it doesn't, it, it's not considered school choice because the money's still in the district. So I, I think we would really run into a huge problem if we allowed that with class sizes okay. if there were you know if there were bubbles of of kids moving from one town to another um and the whole reason school choice is in place is is, is really to allow that you know that money to be fluid if yeah. a kid leaves or comes in um i i think it would have to be discussed in another manner it wouldn't mm -hmm. technically probably be called school choice because you're still in the same district yeah we need to okay. revise the regional agreement right. in some way. Anybody okay. can propose it at any time. Yeah. All right. I thank you all very much for answering my questions. Thank you for asking them because yeah. I, I think, I hope that it clears the air a little bit. And, and I certainly would welcome anyone to contact uh, Dave or myself mm -hmm. 
um, or Dr. Hahi or anyone um, regarding specifics, um, whether it's your own child or the global view or where we are, where we're going, I think it's important to, to make sure that parents um, have all that knowledge. So thank you, thank you very much. Can you, can you touch on one more um, scenario that I don't think has been brought up, but I know has been a concern um, with the important meeting coming up on Monday in Millville, if the 63,000 is not approved, what that impact has on where we're at now, because I think people need to understand that as much. Is that, is that on the um, that's, that's actually on, on the agenda? agenda. Yes. So can we wait till we get to that yep. on the agenda that's and we'll present that? Well, yep. Can I ask one more yep. question? You didn't bring it up now. I don't know. We have, we have yeah, yeah, we can. Up to you. We could. Just as only because we're if we're already yep. discussing from the questions, yep. it might be a good time to. Hang on one second. Are you comfortable doing that? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. I just I was not here for the big, for Stephanie's original question, but can can we get? Um, an actual number for the the current incoming fifth grade in Millville for the because I'm hearing 28 on our papers everything's 28 I've heard 25 26 do we know a, a actual number of incoming fifth graders it is uh, currently it is 28 there are some people who are looking at some other options from what I understand that might reduce that number but that is not official people have not so there are 20 there are 20, 28 um, fourth graders leaving fourth grade and going into fifth grade right at okay. this at this point in time that could change over the summer right okay you know in in either direction and just this slide if thank you, you. and it's another line. conversation so. okay so do you want to go into scenarios yeah I, okay. I can certainly respond to mrs. Watson's question and that might help um, as well um, and we do have a slide that shows that exact break um, which is which we can put up on the screen um, and I thank the retirees for <laughs> listening to me patience yeah. so what, what we did is essentially we took what we had just been talking about and the, just on this this grid these three columns um, if you can just scroll up to the top, Jesse. Does it all fit that on the screen? Oh, that's it. Okay. That's fine. So what you see there, um, the first column on the left, where it says increase of 3.6, that was the adopted budget, uh, March 21st, and that that number um, was reduced by the 473 to get to 22585. Um, the middle column is the recertified budget um, based upon where we are um, and what the school committee did um, after town meetings. So that number is, tw it's just above that increase of 1.1. It's 22 million 35. So there's a $550,000 reduction from the left column to the center column. And w w as, as Dr. Thompson stated, the, the first column reduced um, 283,000 in salaries and 150,000 of curriculum as well as some offsets there. The middle column, um, it's about $400,000 of potential salaries and then 150,000 of, of curriculum technology and supplies. Um, if the, the right hand column is if the 63,000 is not approved, then we would have to reduce the budget by the 63,000 from Millville and 167,000 from Blackstone because the percentages would incorporate that total of 230,000. That 230,000 is really where we have a, a, a really big effect on delivering education because we've really taken and adjusted all of the staff that have resigned retired, taken other positions, decided to go to, to do something different with their lives. So that 230 would then become other things, primarily technology. We have a huge plan to improve our technology around Chromebooks and smart boards and to get that where we need to be to compete with everybody else. And that's $136,000. Um, that takes all the carts that we had planned to purchase out of every building, so that's across the board, as well as the, we've already reduced grade eights, Chromebooks to zero, 
This would be grades 9 and 10. We would wipe out all of the instructional supplies, $80,000, and then to get to that 230 is another additional $14,000 in textbooks. You know, you can make any number work, but it is at what level do you want us to to provide education and take the longer view and not look at things as year to year, month to month, um, us versus them, let's do this but not that. We, we are tasked with trying to make it work for everybody. And a school budget is voted as one number because it's so complicated. It is just complicated to, to assess, it's complicated to manage, it's complicated when things go um, awry for a variety of reasons. And so we are, are looking at a, a severe um, ding to what we are trying to do if that $230,000 would have to be reduced. Can I, uh, sure. can I jump in? And I, and, and I want to go back to the, to, to the middle column because, uh, you know, I, I don't think people, unless they've sat in these meetings or, or watched them all on, on, uh, on YouTube, have, have an appreciation for what those numbers represent. Just let them know that's June 1st because you can't see that. Yeah, that's uh, the, yeah, the middle column, which was June 1st, which includes, assumes the $63,000 from Millville. Okay, and if you look at reduced technology curriculum and supplies, a couple things that are not in there that really should be in there is implementing a writing program in the, at the elementary level. We are putting that off for a year. Okay, that is the eighth grade not having one-to-one -one Chromebooks, which is exactly what they need. That is reducing Chromebooks from two carts per school to one. Okay. Um, and you know, and as far as smart goes, smart board goes. I mean, we did a great job in this district of putting smart boards in, but the problem is they were all put in at the same time, which means they're all aging out at the same time. Okay, that represents a, a reduction in what we assume we'll be replacing next year. Without that 63 and the other 185, 167. So for the 230 means we will not be replacing any smart boards next year. Okay, so if a smart board dies. We're going to have to wait till next year to replace it. Okay, I don't think people understand how tight that middle column, the current budget, is. Okay, we're talking about visual learners. That's how this generation learns. Okay, they need the technology, that's what the future is. <clears throat> So, Mrs. Watson, did that answer? Because that, that, and that will we can put up on the website as well, so everyone can see it. Um, but that takes us through the different steps and the different stages of, of the budget. Um, there's a far left column, which would have been that preliminary budget that we submit in February, and that was about 23 million. Um, then that that far left column is the 22,585, and the middle column is the 22 million. The right column reduces that just about to where we are. I, I would I would just like to see more detail on that before we put it on the website. As Dave just said, like it, it I think it just needs to be a lot more accurate as to what the hundred and fifty thousand was for and what the four hundred thousand dollars in salaries were. And I, I think it needs to be a little more detailed. Okay. For we can do that. To answer questions that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. First off, thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. I know um, a lot of people have been at their keyboards instead. I'm glad you're actually here. This is that's a good thing. I'd rather talk to faces rather than to the computer. This is much much better. Um, the three scenarios that go through. If you look at the if the sixty three thousand does not get approved in Millville on Monday, that would be a zero percent increase. Actually, decrease. A zero percent. That's negative on your. Yeah. The money so that goes to students. Just, just think about your own budgets and things like that. How, how can you grow? How can you improve if you have a 0% increase? Truly. I mean, you know, we, we were tasked early on when we first bought out our budget. Um, Mrs. Wing, you actually said you don't want to see anything over 2.5%. We're at, if we're lucky, we'll be at 1.1% increase. Worst case scenario, we'll be at 0%. Um, it's unfortunate a lot of this is falling on the towns. If you have friends in some of the neighboring towns around here, 
especially Douglas. Uh, I'm not sure if you, if you know what's going on in Douglas. They had an override that failed. Uh, they're going to have class sizes in the mid-30s. They're cutting out sports and clubs and every other thing they can possibly cut. Menden, uh, Menden Upton and Uxbridge, that's been a roller coaster there. They've had similar scenarios. Horrible cuts one year, some restored, back and forth, back and forth. So it's it's not a town problem. I've been, I was on finance committee for a bunch of years before I've been on school committee. And we don't have a spending problem. We have a dramatic revenue problem, whether it's at the town level, at the school level. We have a dramatic revenue problem, and that's what we really need to attack. It's We can fight amongst ourselves for scraps, but the, the problem is not within this room. The problem is at the state house, and that's what we really have to go after. Like I just said, look at all the towns in this area. We all have the same problem. What do we have? The same senators and the same state reps. I think we should uh, turn our focus on them rather than on each other. But again, I'm glad you're all here tonight. So, you know, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Jen? <clears throat> Jennifer Dean Wing, 48 Providence Street, uh, Millville. So I understand the budget. I don't <laughs> need any lessons in that one. Um, so just get back to the classroom. I just want to share some thoughts and I, just a couple questions. Um, so when I told my daughter about this, she looked at me and she goes, oh my God, that is the worst idea ever. So I asked her to elaborate on that. I said, why? <laughs> She's very opinionated. Um, so I asked her why she thought that. And she says, well, because, you know, kids fool around and they can't control themselves. She goes, and our whole class is going to get punished, just like we used to get punished in the cafeteria. She goes, and I'm not going to have a fun year. Now I can talk budget all day and not get emotional, but when it comes to my kids, that that's my heartstrings. So she's very concerned that next year is her last year. She was excited. She's the big girl on campus, she told me now. And she is petrified of losing all of those fun things that you get to do because the class as a whole may lose those. So I will be emailing and I can email all of you when those incidents come up because that is a real concern to a 10 year old. And it's a real concern to me based on time on learning. And as an educator, I know what it's like to be without money. Steve can attest to that. We're in the same district. Um, but I need to ensure that she's going to learn and have a positive experience for six and a half hours in her day, especially Sarah. <laughs> she's very emotional. Um, so I have another question. Um, so that's just a child's view. Um, Miss, um, the, the, the fifth grade teacher has been teaching math right along for numerous years. And I know myself, I came from intensive special ed and I switched over to moderate. So I know there's, there was a learning curve in my first year g getting back into a skill set that I hadn't been using. Is, is there any, I actually had my daughter um, building based support team um, looked at her this year for her reading. So as we enter now in a classroom that is much larger, I have a concern on her reading. What is that going to look like with a teacher who hasn't taught reading in, I don't know, how many years? Eight, nine, ten years? What are we doing for that? Is there a plan? I think the answer to that is that we are working on that okay. and we have the summer to get this uh, implemented okay. properly. You make passionate excellent points and, and they're not falling on deaf ears mm -hmm. we will work as hard as we possibly can to make sure that we have the supports in place I can't tell you Jen what that looks like today I think that there's an awful lot of conversation that was and, my next question what is the staffing of, in the room going to look like right and so we, I should come we're back still to your working, August 13th right whatever meeting that is? We have a lot of work to do in July. We do. Okay. We still are, are watching the sands shift. As you know, at the end of the year, you have a, a, a tremendous turnover mm -hmm. and amount of people moving and coming and going. And that we will have to address along with this. But you, you have to know that this mm -hmm. is a top priority. Okay. So I'll come back in August and ask yeah. those actually, questions. Yeah, actually, those those questions were questions that Dr. Hahi and I spoke about. Yet, 
yeah. yesterday or the mm -hmm. day before, Tuesday. Okay. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, Thursday. But, right. So, you know, but the other, you know, it's hard to, you know, it is hard to plan mm -hmm. to move forward. We've already essentially lost a month uh, because usually these discussions happen and start happening in June. If we're lucky, we will start happening, having them in July. So, but there is, there is discussions on how to address those issues that you mm -hmm. brought up. Uh, and it could be a combination of multiple different things. Maybe there is some uh, some trading of teachers. Maybe there is some co-teaching going on. There's a whole different a bunch of ideas we're just throwing against the wall at this mm -hmm. point. But that's exactly where we are. Okay. And again, it depends on. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I, I'd like to be in a position where before July 1st, I can start planning professional development for next year. But I cannot do that right now. I usually have that pretty much started. Okay. I want to address the first part of yours, your daughter's um, expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that the fifth grade class that just left there, and Aaron can probably attest to this too, um, had was a very difficult group of people. Uh, Mrs. Almquist can attest to that as well. Um, and they had they had seemingly a lot of their um, fun taken away. They sat in the cafeteria in assigned seats for the entire year. Um, it seemed like a lot of things wouldn't happen for them. If you asked my daughter, who complained about all those things all the way through, fifth grade was the best year of her life. Um, and I think part of the reason is, and you have some of the most involved parents in the school sitting right there in the second row, um, we as parents, Aaron and I, we stayed on top of that. Um, we met with the principal. We met with the fifth grade teachers. When are they going to, you know, have their um, McDonald's? When are they going to have their fun outside activities? And some of that stuff wasn't planned because they weren't quote unquote good enough. Um, but all of those things happened in some way or form. Um, and I think it takes parent initiative. I think it takes staying on top of it like you intend to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes encouraging your, your kids because I think any one of us or any of the teachers could say, we got some trouble out there. We do. Schools are different now. They are different. But we have parents who care and we have parents who will take the time to make sure those experiences, because they don't all fall on the teachers or the principals or, or the administration. They a lot of times fall on the parents who are willing to give their time uh, and, and put the effort in to make sure those activities happen, and, and they did. Did they happen in the exact same way they had happened for the fifth grade before that? No, but again, I will tell you that probably Amanda and, and my daughter Melissa and, and half of the fifth grade will say that was the best year ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think your daughter probably will in the end, too. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But it did seem Time like they were always being punished. They were always being punished. And it punished. didn't matter what room they were in. It, it was the class together. And, you know, it, it, it is. So that goes into my last point. question that I have on my list is um, there's actually more people who would have come, but because we didn't really until yesterday when the report cards came home and it just said fifth grade, it didn't have a teacher. So we, you know, we we had to go off the rumors that were going around so they with the short notice they weren't able to come but there was a considerably about um, more uh, families who are concerned about this so in September as concerns come up we I'm sure will be addressing them um, as need basis so should we and I said this at the beginning should we be emailing all of you as a carbon copy as to those concerns seeing that we had we made the effort to come here this evening could we include you into all of those emails so that you have an understanding of what's going on into that building it, it needs to go to dr. Hawhey yeah I'll, I'll speak for myself well, I'm saying CC yeah certainly the teachers and the in the building leadership are, the, are who you want to reach out to first but certainly uh, dr. Thompson and myself you can um, keep us posted and and we will make sure that we um, make sure that the communication goes back to you as well okay. and it, it is that's nothing to do against dr. Hawkey because I have the oh, no. utmost respect no, for him. Yeah. I've worked with him through the pack I worked yeah. with him through personal professional avenues <coughs> and I have the utmost respect but I think the people here who are making decisions needs to know how those decisions impact sure. also mm -hmm. okay Absolutely. thank you thank you Moving on to our retirees. We have with us three of the uh, six uh, folks who are retiring this year. And I wanted to ask <coughs> if maybe as a group they wouldn't mind coming up. Um, 
Mrs. Dagnell, who is a social studies teacher at the middle school, and Mrs. Roussel, math teacher at the middle school, and Mrs. Almquist, elementary teacher at Millville Elementary. We say uh, a lot of things about teachers. It, you don't have to wor worry. The news um, is very quick to point out things that, that go wrong in schools today. What they're not as quick to point out is all the stuff that goes right in our schools. And we have three professional educators here who have given every day for many, many, many years to generations of students, some of whom are at this table, um, in, in, in our educational community. And um, I just want to, as someone late to your party, um, <laughs> extend my personal thanks for your careers that you chose to keep them here because we have an awful lot of kids who benefited by the work that you did and the reach that you have and teachers are oftentimes we don't know the reach that we have until sometimes years later but boy oh boy you all can hold your head high and and you're welcome to march in that graduation line next year at the high school anytime and Thank and you. I really can't state it enough how thankful we are. I know the committee might want to ask about the books you've chosen, mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted to, before I turn it back over to the committee, is give you some flowers. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. On behalf of all of us at BMR, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So I think the committee would like to know the book that you chose and why you chose that book. I'll go first. Okay. I'm shy. You know. We all are. I chose um, Memories of an Invisible Friend, an imaginary friend. Excuse me, imaginary friend, and it is written by <coughs> a home. Blackstonian, a homegrown Blackstonian. Matthew Dix grew up here on Federal Street. Um, he graduated the class of 1989. And in 1978, when I was doing my professional practicum at JFK School with Sandra Herzik, Matthew was in that class. And I didn't know that until I read his first book. Um, it, it wasn't his first book, his first book I read, The Comeback of Caroline Jacobs, and it's set here in Blackstone, mm -hmm. and it mentions BMR Regional High School, and Mr. Powers was the principal, and many, many of the teachers that I knew, he mentioned streets, so many things that um, he mentions in the book, and I had a couple of questions, and I emailed him, and we started going back and forth. I heard him speak at the library. And then when he was mentioning some of his friends, I said to him, who was your first grade teacher? And he couldn't remember it. When I reminded him, I think it was Mrs. Herzik. He said, yes, that was it. So when you talk about you don't know who you're going to touch or influence, I mean, here we, we had a connection all the way back to 1978. And in 2015, I'm reading Matthew's book, um, it won an award in Connecticut for um, best, one of the best teen books. Um, I love his writing style, and it's told from the point of view of an autistic boy's imaginary friend who knows that one day he's not going to be needed. So um, it's excellent. And uh, Matthew would like to come to the middle school sometime next year, and I've already spoken with Justin about it, to get him here because... He, he's a great, great storyteller, orally and on paper. Mm. Excellent. Thank you. Good choice. Okay, we'll move right down the line here. <laughs> Hi. Um, I chose uh, Danima, Danica McKella, who is a well-known, best-selling author, but you probably know her as Winnie, Winnie. Cooper the from the Wonder Years, <laughs> Winnie and Kevin Arnold, um, yeah. back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. So it goes back a little while. Well, she went on to become a great mathematician. And for her love of math, she 
focused on math education, which has been my love all these years. And she has graduated from UCLA, and she also has spoken as a math advocate, and she pushes for math education in children. And she started writing these books. That The one I picked is called Kiss My Math, and it's for the love of mathematics, the kiss, my math, and how much she loves and appreciates it. She put it forth into small chapters, and it, believe it or not, is a math book that you can read. As we have difficulty even saying, I want to pick up that math book and read it, no. Uh, she has teen topics in there that appeal to children that are 12, 13, 14 years old, such as, you know, things they can relate to, like small parties or backpacks, things they own, going to a dance, uh, shopping, fashion, going to a salon, going to a spa, uh, vacations, family, friends, popularity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she takes small stories and she makes them so that they can be read such that you would be a, a math tutor. The book would be simply like a little math tutor. And it's designed for teens to not be afraid or show stress or math anxiety. So it, it humanizes the math with these topics and appeals to teens. And I really love it. I have more than one of these books. And th this one is geared toward this age group that I teach all the time, day in and day out. So I am pleased to have it in this Frederick Cotnett Library. And I, I, she is a wonderful author. And it's for parents, too. It's for teens. It's for anybody. It's, it's girls, boys. Um, but I, I really do love this book, and I ha always have for many years. I read it. I read all her other books, and um, it's going to be in this library. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The book I have chosen is A Giving Tree by Charles Silverstein. <laughs> the book I have chosen is The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. And the reason I've chosen it is because it's a story about giving it's a story about sacrifice and it's a story about sharing and I think those are all lessons we need to teach our children mm -hmm. um, I ask the boys and girls questions as to later on as to what would they what would they give what's the most important thing they could give to other people and it becomes a higher a kind of a higher level uh, thinking kind of activity um, I use it during the holiday season, and we come up with lists of things that we could give people or do for people that are not necessarily material and things that would be very beneficial to, to people and, and also the culture. Um, I just find it a very deep book, even though it's a very short story, and I think it's even very good for adults to read because sometimes I think we forget the lessons in life and what's really most important in life. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance, I suggest you read it and read <laughs> it to your children because I think it's a very, it's a book with a very, very good meaning to it, and I think it will leave, leave you feeling <coughs> warm and fuzzy inside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to... Um, just address a few of the teachers that I've had. Um, <laughs> two out of the three. Um, I, I just, um, Mrs. Dano, and I'm still going to call you Mrs. Dano. Um, Mrs. Dano was my teacher, but she was not only my teacher, but she was also a mentor, a colleague, and most importantly, a friend. And I can tell you, um, you know, I, not only her, but a, a couple teachers at the complex. Um, really pushed me to want to be a teacher and I think it, you were one of them. Um, I also enjoyed every minute of working with my first year uh, teaching in Blackstone, working with you and Mrs. Adams. I'll never forget them. Um, <laughs> don't tell the story, but I will never forget it. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've not only touched me, but you've also touched, you know, my brother. And, you know, you're going to be missed. You're definitely going to be missed, and we appreciate all that you've done. So I just wanted to point that out, um, and thank you. Um, Mrs. Roussel, 
you were my math teacher in high school, and I do remember having a really difficult time in math, but the one thing I remembered is how you broke everything down. I remember it being algebra, and I remember the, the V that we had to break down for orders of op, and I'm doing it now when I teach math, and, and the two things that I remember most was that, and I remember the coordinate grids, which I reached out a long time ago and asked for them because those are the things that I remembered in your class, and you know I just wanted to make sure that I said thank you for the those two things that I remember most and and I, I think that's a perfect book because you know for me I struggled in math and it was it whatever you did worked so <laughs> I appreciate it look at you now doing budgets and, and look at you now doing budgets I mean <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to reach out and appreciate all the hard work that both of you have done so thank you and I'm just gonna, I, okay. you want to I get up? to go, no, no, because I get to go about Mrs. Almquist. I'm going to go about Mrs. Almquist, too, so let's you go are? rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so rock, paper, scissors, ready to go. 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 Uh, we'll both go, because we both, we are going to talk they're, about they're, this. They're, uh -huh. they're, yeah, are both of our children, are you, too? Not me. Both of yours, both of yours? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, one of mine, I only have one. I asked to speak on behalf of Mrs. Almquist because, and I'm going to cry. So you can go and then I'll go. <laughs> no, you're going now. You started. Right, right no, I'll go. I'll go. Listen, there is. No, I am no. Uh, I wasn't surprised at all that you, your book was the Giving Tree because, really, I, I might start getting choked up. You, what are you doing? Uh, my you. my daughter still talks about you, and she's she's yeah. almost 17. And and when I told her tonight that you were, uh, she was going to write you a card and whatnot. I said, just you you can mail it. You can mail it. But I mean, all of you have touched people. You know, that's mm -hmm. what we do. You know, in terms of this business. Um, but the people that stick that Wendy's talking about and my daughter talks about all the time. So it's great. Okay, I said thank you. <laughs> well, and, and as you know, um, my daughter had a very difficult time last year. There is no one with a kinder heart. And I'm not sure she would have continued at Millville had it not been for you. So thank you so much. We enjoyed having her in class. Well, <laughs> that I can't say, but. <laughs> no, was the class that yeah. raked me over the coals? No, yeah. that was this year's class. Oh, that was <laughs> this year's class. Okay, good. I think we, we all went through the system, you know, yes. and we, we took pride in working in the system we went through. And, and you know, I saw uh, Fred Hartnett this week, and, I, you know, I thanked him for giving me the opportunity in 1977 to be able to come into his school and volunteer. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was doing because I got my foot in the door, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was hired right out of college in 1979 when no one was hiring teachers mm -hmm. because there was That's a right. ton of them. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm always grateful that, you know, I was given the chance. And, and I, I really, just the only profession I ever wanted was to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we all gave our our hearts to our, our position into our community. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'll ask the question for Dr. Thompson. Will it, any of you be able to sub for us? <laughs> <laughs> or babysit? You can take the summer off. <laughs> I, I, will, I, do, I will do emergency babysitting. Okay. Emergency is the key word, yes, on both parts. Um, um, you know, I, I considered babysitting. <laughs> Some, some long term, like if someone goes out on maternity leave, maybe, but. Yes, same here. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Duly Thank noted. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you all. Thank you. Well done. Hmm? I said I forgot your kids. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. We are going to move right to consent agenda A. <laughs> Is there, uh, we have warrants, we have minutes of the meetings for June 14th. Is there anybody who wants to make a motion for one, for all? Uh, move consent agenda A. Motion made by Jane to move consent agenda A. Is there a second? Second. Second by Georgette. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes yeah, have. I have to abstain for the minutes. <laughs> yes. I'm abstaining as well for the minutes. Okay. So Erin and I just have to abstain, abstain. for the minutes. It's um, Do you get that? Okay. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. So Erin and Bill will be abstaining from the minutes for the June 14, 2016. Um, school committee. Going down to the school committee. Discussion of the regional agreement. Um, I believe Terry wanted to put that on the agenda. 
Yeah. Um, so we had asked after the Blackstone vote where they had said yes, Millville had said no. Um, and then there was talk that we could bring it back to Millville in November. Um, I just don't think that we're ready to bring it back to Millville um, in November. I don't want to see it go away. I do want to see some more work put in. Um, I have a kindergartner starting in the fall, and the case of this current fifth grade is a perfect example of why I'd like to see it considered and um, continue to be researched. Any other discussion? I agree with that. I think it's 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 just to let everybody know that you know where we stand people kept saying where does the committee stand and I, I thought it was very important for Blackstone to have their chance to give us their opinion um, and I, I think right now we have to focus on the unfortunate other you know budget problems that we have and such so yeah, I agree I mean there's a lot of I mean there was years worth of work that went into that mm -hmm. you know and, and I'd hate to see it go totally away, but I do think there has to be a little bit of a break here and see where what what happens. And, mm -hmm. um, but just so you're thinking of maybe next spring, talk about we're not going to try to get it done this fall. Right. right. So I think we need to give it some time. Um, hopefully, a lot of the people who are vocal um, from the towns would be willing to join the committees right. and help. And, and that's do what some I was going to say. I would encourage yeah. people who have an opinion one way or another to come together and. And and flesh out, you know, maybe something completely. I mean, maybe there's something, you know, completely different out there that that makes sense for the the two towns and the regional agreement. But it, it needs more discussion, and it needs discussion from all yep. folks in the both communities, the teachers, the, the staff, everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So, does there need to be a motion to put it kind of to rest right so. now, I don't or, think so. or are we all in agreement that we're not going to move it forward? Um, in the fall, but we're we're hopeful that we leave it open for either a committee member or committees who are interested in moving this forward mm -hmm. to continue the work that the prior committee has done and then some mm -hmm. um, in the future. It can only move forward if someone here that's correct. takes it. So right. that's it, correct. You know, so it's good to kind of keep it, but I think there does need to be a little bit of a break and and then go forward. You know, so either way, right. So, so just to say it one more time, we're not going to move this forward in the fall, correct? Correct. Okay. Anything else? That's all I had on it. Okay. Um, we actually are going to move the superintendent evaluation. I was wondering, um, Alan and I were wondering if um, we could do it um, next Tuesday. Is it Tuesday, the 28th? That would be an ideal day. And I apologize. I'm just not prepared to have everything for you tonight. It's been a crazy few weeks, and and, um, and so I, I just ask your indulgence if I could move it forward to next week. Did we fill something out yet? Or what? Are we I'm, doing that? No. No. I, no. I still need he to has to present. To I need to he present. He has to present. Okay. Just um, I won't be available. I won't be, available. I won't be here. Yeah. Is there a day at all next week that um, I, I am I am not here until July um, 18th? Okay. Lucky. <laughs> and I'm going with Jane. So. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up for All that. are welcome. But Jane needs a ride, so you're driving. All are welcome. Um, we so. can move this. We can move this to August, um, but we need to stay in our time frame because um, that's what we were. We had planned on doing. Um, so I think we'll. I'll have. Dis we'll have discussions, and yeah. then we'll get back to the. We could present at the next meeting, the next schedule meeting that we have that's in July. July, yeah. July right? Yeah. And yeah. then we, then our part can be done July, August. July, August. Right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. July 11th. Yeah. I can view it. Yeah, I can view it, and then yeah. yeah, I can make my I will be comments because God knows I'll have some. Are we going to use Survey Monkey again just to let, uh, just to help? Me? Um, well, actually, I, I created folders for everybody tonight on the evaluation to take notes, and um, I was going to go through it, and then after the res after you take your notes, and there'll be a Survey Monkey ready. But I won't be here July 11th, so I think we need to make sure that we have a quorum. Any other questions on that? Okay, moving on to the superintendent, uh, the report of the superintendent. Thank you very much. Um, we have with us our athletic director, Jill Tosti, who uh, had done a survey and wanted to explain that to the committee and then also speak on the lacrosse uh, opportunities. Mrs. Tosti. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Jill Tosti. I'm So I handed you guys uh, some packets 
we had two surveys done. Uh, one was for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, and the other one was we reached out to all of our high school um, kids. And the survey was asking, um, you know, if they would participate in a sport. Um, if we added new sports, what sports would they be interested in playing? And I mean, I'm at the high school, so I hear a lot more that the kids, you know, two sports that they are really interested in adding uh, was lacrosse and hockey. Um, so we reached out to all the kids, had them take the survey, and I also attached, there's two sheets of bar graphs mm -hmm. that kind of show where we are number-wise. So if you look at, we'll start with middle school, um, if you flip it on the back, so girls ice hockey had 19 girls interested, uh, boys ice hockey had 28, um, and then if you go down to girls lacrosse, it was at 22, and boys lacrosse was at 14. Um, it was one of the bigger ones, and um, kind of something that I've been working all year to try to get a co-op first. Um, and if we were to co-op with lacrosse, it would not cost the school any additional fund or any additional money. Um, a co-op would be... So they, so they would play... At so Hopedale, Hopedale would have the team. Yep, so we wouldn't be hosting. And who would buy... Hopedale would have the uniforms? Yep, so everything. Hopedale would have just kind of... Very similar to how we, we co-op... football. Yeah, so the Hopedale kids pay our user fee, and we supply their uniforms, we supply their equipment, we supply their coaches, siphons, all that stuff, buses for games and um, any other things. Hopedale would supply our kids with uniforms, um, coaches, stipends, and supplies. So it wouldn't cost us any additional money. Um, and I focus a little heavier on lacrosse for this year. Um, Obviously, by the survey, you know, hockey is a huge sport, too, that I think would hopefully keep kids in our district and maybe even add, you know, instead of having kids school choice to other, to other high schools, they, you know, they'll know that, okay, well, you know, I play hockey now, and why would I want to go to BMR if they don't have it there? And, I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of what it comes, kids kind of would pick schools based off of the sports that we offer. Um, I think it would reach out to a, a wider variety of kids, and lacrosse is one of the biggest sports that has been skyrocketing. And um, you know, and I think adding it would just benefit the district in a whole. And it again, it wouldn't cost us really any money. So there's no cost to the district. The kids, the user fees that they collect is that, that would be Hopedale? that would be to Hopedale, just like how football Hopedale kids would pay our user fees. Our kids would pay Hopedale's user so, fee. So when this survey was done, though, yep. these kids said, "Oh, I'd be interested in playing lacrosse." Mm -hmm. They answered that question just essentially based on interest, not necessarily based on what that. Do we know what that user fee would be? It would be yes. It's two fifty. So it's. $50 more than what we pay over at the high school. Um, the reason for the survey was I've gotten a lot of, or a few emails through parents asking, you know, my son really wants to play lacrosse. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could get him to play lacrosse at the high school so I don't have to school choice him to another school? And, you know, I spoke with Mr. Dudek about this, and he suggested, let's do a survey and let's just see what we have for numbers. And, I mean, I was not surprised with the amount of boys, I was a little surprised at the amount of girls that are interested in in lacrosse. And um, if if we also ask the question for high school, what sport you wouldn't play if you picked lacrosse? And a chunk of the kids said that they don't play a sport in the spring, mm -hmm. anyway. So it wouldn't. I don't think it would affect our numbers at the high school level for like say baseball and softball. Um, but again, I. Is that yep, that would be on the high school one. It was, it's a, I think the last, if I did play a new sport offered at BMR, which sport would I not play? And a lot of people said that they don't play a sport. Because that's my concern, Jill, is, is every, at the end of every season this year, we've had the team captains in, mm -hmm. and we've asked, what do you need? What, how can we help you? And 
Every single people? team said they don't have enough. They're, they're, they're not enough fielding numbers. their team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would be extremely concerned on where these kids were coming from. I, 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 I it would be nice to offer every sport, but we don't have the kids. I have, I, I have we the same concern because I'm constantly hearing from both towns that whatever sport it is that we don't have the numbers. We don't have the numbers. We don't yeah. have the numbers. In soccer, I think would be a prime example yeah. where it's pretty popular in this mm-hmm. town. And it's often asked why we don't have soccer available at the sixth grade level as a middle school team. Mm-hmm. And I've been told by people in, in high school and middle school that we just don't have the numbers. It'll take away from the JV team. Mm-hmm. So if we pull kids from lacrosse, how does that affect the baseball right. team? And then do right. we not have enough kids for a baseball team? Even, and, or if kids aren't playing sports, is it just because it's not lacrosse or are they just not playing sports because? Mm-hmm. I just but don't the, think we're. Because it costs the, the $250. Beauty of a co-op, you don't have to feel the whole team. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but, whole, but, but the then you have 14 kids that wanted to do it, and they're not going to take 14 either. So as How do I, we know that? But I think the concern is that those 10 kids who play soccer who are going to leave the soccer team to play. Soccer is a fall sport. Yeah. But oh, it's just an example. Sport. Sport. Yeah. 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 So they, they might not play baseball. They play lacrosse instead, and that will right. impact our baseball numbers. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. th- the number is kind of high, but if, if, if I could pick take all these kids and actually sit and ask each one of them if they were really thinking of playing it, I would say probably half, if that, would actually be interested. Um, I, and I was asked that, are, like any of them currently playing in a youth league or is this there, a pie in the sky? There was a couple incoming uh, middle school kids that were coming up to the high school that play um, a ta- in, in like a, I want to say they play with one of the travel teams. Um, and then a couple, there was a couple kids in high school that have played like they school choice from Hopedale to us, and um, you know they showed interest as well. The so point is they're already playing somewhere, so they know what they're getting into. Yeah. Okay. And what, does does Hopedale currently have a team? They do. Or do um, they need our kids to make it viable. They would need more kids to field both teams. So without a co-op, um, and it would be not only with us, but with also Whitensville Christian. So it'd be three teams in the Dual Valley um, that would be joining one team. Um, and Julie, I apologize if you have it yep. somewhere already. What, at what grade would it be offered? It would be, co-op? right now it would be at the high school. Just at the high school? So yes. JV and varsity? Yep. Um, but I mean, I know there are, like Menden is, it, uh, just started a youth league. So parents that may have their kid do lacrosse at Menden now may say, oh, well, BMR has a co-op, so I'm going to keep my kid at mm-hmm. BMR. Um, and where do we stand with hockey? Because I, I know many of us thought there was already a co-op and then it was there, only one kid. And Yep, uh, there was a co-op last year with Bellingham. And um, we I met with kids twice. I had a list of maybe five or six kids. Um, I had the coach come down and no one seemed interested in it. And um, unfortunately, because of that, they dropped us. I'm hoping that with a new AD that's coming in, maybe I can reopen that co-op again or or at least ask if it would be possible to think about having it now that I have this doc you know numbers that are out here who's that co-op with again Bellingham Bellingham. it was Milford too we had Milford um the numbers Milford just folded there they're they're looking right Mm -hmm. yeah they're I they hopped on with yep they were trying yeah yep so but I, I my personal opinion is I think even if there's two kids that go play, <coughs> mm-hmm. it's great. It's a great um, uh, community builder in terms of finding, you know, if yep. Hope Deal is going to be mm-hmm. a nice uh, fit for other sports as well to co-op, th- there's no hurt in it. And, and there's no, there's not a dime coming from us. It's all, it's yeah. all the user fees. It doesn't cost us a penny, yeah, so there's no risk. Uh, I'm with you. I, I see no reason not to. Mm-hmm. But, but. Yeah, I, and, and I think it's important because, you know, you do not want to have students leaving our district to play their sport somewhere else, and that is what happens. Mm-hmm. You have a kid who's very passionate about playing a sport and they can't do it in that district, they go elsewhere. Um, we need to make sure we give kids that opportunity and keep them in district. Mm-hmm. Just back, one more thing on mm-hmm. like making sure, checking budget-wise. Yep. Um, busing practices, how is that paid? So, for? as of now, um, well, for Hopedale, and let's just talk about the football co-op. They don't bus their kids to us. Okay. Um, they all, either parents will pick their kids up, bring them to practice, or they kind of do a little carpool with the high school kids that are legal to drive their kids. They'll bring them here. Um, I did reach out to see what it would if we tried to shuttle kids there um, to Hopedale, just to kind of see if it would 
if that could be an option and it would just be a one-way shuttle that and parents would pick up there um, I mean I'm not really sure if they'd be the shuttle is 50 bucks if they'd be like another option um, but, but yet if you're sure. if you're joining with Whitensville Whitensville has their own vans they do Whitensville might be able to they could be able to do a pickup and that was a thought too yeah. But if it's five kids, there are plenty of kids that can carpool. That's I yeah. mean every other yeah, high school does that. Every other so is there a cost? That. Did you get a number? It was two um, forty one for a whole season, for one trip. So each day from where? Oh, Telstone. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, two hundred forty one dollars. Crazy. We can buy a bus. We can buy a bus for but that. But again, get a limo. Like would I? Season. I might drive. I ideally, I wouldn't do a bus <laughs> for know, yeah. those like four kids. Drive. Well, I mean, the problem with the bus <laughs> is that you have five kids on a bus. So Bill, you often do it for half. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they're going to run by Shepherd Hill. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so, I mean, but, for, uh, if for people five are interested, kids. Parents, parents, agree, parents will do it. I agree. I mean, you're talking yeah. a high school level. Should, some yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I just, I just, you know, I think it's great. I think the more sports, the better. I'm still waiting for golf to come back. I'm with you on that one. So the same would be but, for games. They own transportation. Yep. Yeah. That's but um, I just, is there any concern that if there's a, do, or actually explain to me a little bit better. If I play um, football in the fall and lacrosse in the spring, I pay a user fee for football and a user fee for lacrosse. Correct. Yep. And I do that now anyway, regardless yep. of where the sport is being yes. played. So, so essentially mix. it's 50 bucks more for me. Yes. What happens it's if it's a family cap. mix? Like a family cap? Yeah. Um, I know we have a family cap of 600. I'm not sure if Hopedale has that same right. option. Well, what if our, if our player had already met that, they still have to pay Hopedale's user? I mean, that could be something that I could talk with the Hopedale about that. Um, in a co-op, is it our responsibility, big picture, if um, for busing? Not to games, no. But it is our responsibility if they choose to go to play lacrosse. It's our responsibility whether to bus those kids to practice. No, no. we don't. No, no. So it's not. As we were saying, no. no. Parents would do it, shuttle it. Do we, yeah. you know. I just want to make sure it's not it within. No, there's no like like I said. Hopedale does not bus their kids to us. They all carpool, or parents will pick their kids up and bring them to. Mm -hmm. um, BMR for practice. Is this something that has to be decided now, or it's not? A, it's not until next spring. So, is it something that could be brought back next fall? Yeah, I absolutely could. Um, we actually. So, how a co-op works is, we reach out to the schools that need the co-op to have their teams stay, and then from there, it gets voted on by the league, and then if everyone agrees about it, you know, then we go to the MIA, fill out a form, and they have the final say if they want us to co-op or not. Right now, um, the Hopedale AD did approach the um, lacrosse league that Hopedale is in because they're not in the Dual Valley because the, there's only two teams in our league that have it. And um, two of the six schools said yes, and we're just waiting to hear from the other ones. So, it's, I mean, mm. if no one votes, no. more people vote no, then this just won't happen. But I figured I'd right. kind of see where you guys stood before... Yeah. You know, since they're asking and filling out forms before they went any further. Now, is is girls in the fall and boys in the spring? Nope, they're both in the spring. Oh, I thought girls were in the fall. Okay. Any other discussion? No. I mean, I'll make a motion if someone wants to second it. And, and on those contingencies you said about the MIA and, and everything else, if all goes to plan, um, that we would be open to co-oping with Hopedale. Second. Motion made by Bill, seconded by Jane. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Abstentions? Okay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to approve the transportation contract. Thank you very much, Mrs. Greenstein. In your packets, you have the uh, transportation uh, motion with the information, and I'll let Mrs. Cobb uh, take us through um, where we stand on this. Uh, the district did the transportation bid in March, and we received one bid from our current vendor, uh, Pellstone. And in May, we brought in um, the, uh, our transportation consultant, Mr. Fabri, uh, who was here the last uh, school committee meeting. And uh, um, he um, 
introduced himself, and he had very rich uh, experience with uh, school transportation, and uh, he sees a lot of potential that we could save money in long run by doing uh, another bid in fall. So the recommendation is to reject the bid we received in March and uh, awarded the fifth year extended uh, contract for the next school year. By doing that, um, so the the cost uh, uh, we proposed is 965520 um, The bid cost is a million two thousand two hundred forty, uh, which is thirty six thousand saving, compared to the bid, and uh, compared to the current cost is um, um, the difference of nine hundred sixty five thousand to one million sixty one thousand, which is uh, about ninety five thousand saving from last from this year to this year. year? Yep, ninety five thousand. If we do the fifth year, yes. Because we reduce uh, three routes. The buses. Yeah. We are reducing three, even if we're extending a fifth year. Yes. Um, I have another question. You just said um, that we brought in our consultant. That wasn't something the committee approved, correct? I was not here, but oh. do we do we don't have a consultant, correct? I know he we, came to the meeting. I was not here, but okay. Did mm -hmm. Alan? We did not hire him, correct? No. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. But you're saying at his recommendation. But we're, um, we plan to have him to do the routing in summer. But that has to be approved by the yes. committee, yes. correct? Correct. Yes. And along with. We have not approved that. Have not. Not at do we this have point? to motion that along with the um, fifth year? We don't have that in this motion. No, you I do see. not. This no. motion is, this is, motion is simply strictly to go to the fifth year. Mm -hmm. Correct. To extend the fifth year, and this will be the costs. Mm -hmm. So the savings, just so I can understand this again, between last year and this year is a total savings of 95000 Is that accurate? Yes, on the bus. Can you tell us where the third route um, was reduced? I know our it's original. It's actually half because we had a sh shuttle, uh, which cost the 27000 It's outside of the contract. And what was that shuttle doing? Um, to transport kids to daycares. The Boys and Girls Club? Boys and Girls Club. Are we still doing that? We're, We're still doing that, but it's included in that 13 routes Putting them on for a regular bus. Yeah. So, so these routes, these proposed that reduce the three, the three buses, can be covered in the contract that we already have by extending it in the fifth year. Yes, there, those there was routes no were run through our program that we purchased. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. And have we actually run those routes? Are they are they just are they jacked. accurate? Are they on one way streets that we're going backwards on? Are they? Has anybody gone out and physically like? It was just these me. Out? Okay. Did a draft. <coughs> That's why we need to bring uh, the professionals to do the routes for us. Um, because we're going to look at the actual ridership in the high school in the fall, and um, um, there, there are going to be somebody in uh, Mr. Labrie's company to do the routes for us if okay. we approve to do that. The cost is um, 500 a day, uh, not exceeding. 10,000 for the whole service for the year. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the fifth year. We move forward um, in the fifth year of the transportation of pupils specified from March 16th, 2016, be rejected in the entirety um, as not being in our best interests. Um, and that we make a motion that our fifth option 
our fifth year option under the co current contract with Telstone and Sun uh, be awarded at the following rates contained in the bid and subsequent contract, which is element, elementary routes $195 per day, secondary $192 per day, other secondary routes $239 per day. Um, but motion. I, I think I would also add to that motion that, um, or maybe there would be a second motion that we are, n are not moving forward with a consultant for our busing. So do you want to make we have to deal too, with this one for two, two, two. This, 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 Let's just yeah. keep this two. motion the way it's written. Yeah. Mm. Keep so, this one in so there's a motion. Do you want that motion or do you want this motion or the motion that you just made? The motion to extend in our fifth year. Okay. So a motion to extend as written. Okay. So was to made reject and then to extend to the fifth mm -hmm. year. Correct. That motion was made by Aaron. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joanne. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Ayes have it. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to make a motion that we are. Um, I guess not approving the transportation consultant that was uh, with us at the last meeting based on our financial situation and um, too many unknowns at this point. If it's something we can look at later in the summer once we, once we do have a finalized budget for ourselves, um, I just want to make sure it's not confused that we are using it. And it seems like when seems to think it's already happening. So I just, need to I mean and we need a motion to see where the committee stands on spending that money when we don't even have a, a certified budget at this point I'll make I'll second it for discussion purposes okay. motion made by Aaron seconded by Bill discussion um, I I would like to know um, I know that it's it's ten thousand dollars for the services of that company um, I would like to know if we saw any, I know he said he, he, the idea was that they would bring multiple districts in and in other words, their bargaining power for working with different agencies becomes stronger. I mean, I got that hint. So I got the idea that, you know, with that stronger kind of buying power, if you will, um, potentially we would see other, um, other bids, lower bids, um, more accurate information that we put out. Um, but I, I guess I wonder about. My concern. No, there are like never any guarantees yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. But it's it's kind of like we we did eleven thousand, so we'd have a computer program that would help us, mm -hmm. and now we do ten thousand, so we have a people that would help us. But our bids don't seem to be getting any better. They're getting worse, um, and they're getting we're just getting one. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't see the upside at this point. I, I just, what I'd like to see is happen after we have a certified budget because I don't see how we can sit here and spend any money when we don't have any money. Right. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any money. If we have $10,000, it needs to go to Chromebooks and it needs to go where we said we're cutting from. So that's why I'm making the motion. Dave? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm actually in the same boat where, you know, I'm talking to vendors about a hypothetical budget that we don't have. So I, I agree with that point. But I, and I have to say, I have not met Mr. Labrie until last week. I've never laid eyes on him. But he is the bus consultant in uh, Bridgewater Raynham, where I came from, negotiated a contract, got a new vendor, several bidders and I believe saved in this a much larger district of 6,000 kids but saved $450,000 in the in the next bid mm -hmm. a year okay so you know and I don't know I just know that that was the story because we were changing bus companies and it was a major change but whatever he did and I wasn't involved with what he did but it did save the district a significant amount of money um, so I you know I and I agree we can't spend money we don't have because we do not have a budget but um, you know, you know, th there is that penny wise and pound foolish I, I think uh, scenario as well. No, so, right. I, 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 I my, my I, only I, feedback is um, there are many consultants that come in throughout the district. I don't, I don't think we approve any of them. 
So mm. why are we approving this one? Well, because it's money. budgetary. It's it's ten thousand dollars. It's not currently in the district. It's not under yeah. contract Any consultant services that comes either. in here that does PD for us, we, we don't. No, we, we do. don't vote we, for that. Yes, we, we have do. a PD it's line PD. item. It's a line item. We have it's specific, not contract services. We have specific P consultants that we we approve and yes, and, we do. And we vote. Well, I've been here three years. I haven't voted for one yet. Look at so. it then. Yeah. While I certainly echo what David said, I I couldn't agree more with Aaron that we are in a a kind of a no person zone right now and um, until we get one uh, a budget um, that we know the number of it would be imprudent to, to make any f future spend mm -hmm. so uh, certainly you know we we know we have work to do but i think that this um you know will, will allow us to proceed at the right time mm -hmm. so thank you do you have any idea, Lord, that might be? Like, what's a rough timeline? What are we thinking? Well, I think it's probably, you know, August. We, we have to first get a budget and, and with, 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 with hopefully a number on Monday, then we can plan and go forward. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if, if we don't get a number um, solidified on Monday, then it becomes a much longer process. So... So by delaying it, we have no evaluation prior to September. So we're going to be evaluating during the school year uh, for possibly next year. When the when would the bids go out again? They said fall was the recommendation. Fall, the ideal time. fall would November, be the bids. December, so yeah. September. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, October, November. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what they said at our last meeting. Is that right? When? Yeah. October, yes. November. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion? Can I ask again what the actual motion is? Because I don't the want us to make a motion that says we're not going to gonna hire. I, yeah. I'd rather see the motion say we're going to table this or hold this yeah. or whatever. So what's the specific motion? My motion was that we were not spending $10,000. It was, to re it was to reject the financial consultant for transportation contract. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not. Well, there was. Well, let, let's, that, go through the, let's go through know, the. Until the Let's go through the process Budgets. because we already have a motion. So we had a motion made by Aaron, seconded by Bill mm -hmm. for discussion purposes. Um, all those in favor of that discussion, of, of that particular. Which was what? I, I which was to reject financial consultant for transportation contract. Period. Period. So all those in favor to reject the transportation cons consultant say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, we need to show of hands. Because I don't know Which what they are. The, so let's. The nays or the yeas? Well, we're going to do mm -hmm. the ayes first. So those in favor of rejecting it? Four? Five? Um, those in favor of. Uh, those nay? So nay is Steve, Jane, and Bill. Ayes are um, Joanne, Tara, Wendy, and Georgia. Aaron. Mm -hmm. And Georgette. Georgette. <laughs> okay, moving on to rubbish contract. Thank you very much. Um, every year we do have uh, uh, quotes for our collection of rubbish. Uh, and so for this year we had two uh, bids returned. Uh, Republic, who had the contract two years ago, and Casella, who has the contract this year. Um, the district is recommending that we um, employ Republic services at the rate of 13860 dollars for the year with a summer pickup rate of $45 per container um, and the recommendation would be to accept that quote uh, from Republic Services. Do we have a motion in here? Right on the bottom. Yeah, it's right at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. Is that pretty much in line with what it was? Oh. Very similar. Both bids were close um, and very similar to years past. Yes. Looking for a motion on the rubbish contract? Move to accept the quote from Republic Services of Fall River, Massachusetts for rubber, rubbish collection services for the 2016-17 school year. Okay, motion was made by Jane. Is there a second? Second. Second by Steve. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, report of the assistant superintendent. I have nothing to report, Madam Chair. Okay. Did that last week. Okay. That's our second public forum. Good. Okay. Um, school committee forum. Bill, you want to start? No, I'm good. Okay. Jane? Good. Georgette? 
I keep looking at Steve because you have the different name tags. <laughs> I know, the switch is like, oh, is that that? Really oh. I'll be mean. It's the same from my angle. <laughs> Joanne? I just wanted to um, say thank you to all the teachers at JFK AFM. Um, my child, last child going through the elementary school, has moved on now up to the middle school. And um, just want to thank them all. It's been a wonderful experience. And um, same thing with my volunteering there since 2005-ish, I guess. Um, that's it. Just thank, thank you. you very much. Steve? I'd like to thank the uh, people that came for public forum today. It's great to see. I, I wish we had a lot more of that on an ongoing basis. It's good to see. Um, hopefully, you'll see a lot of people at the middle of the meeting on Monday. Tara? Nothing. Nothing. Erin? Nothing. And Winnie has nothing. Upcoming meetings. We have July 11th, 2016 is a public meeting. Um, anything that you want to add to the agenda? We do have the superintendent evaluation added to the agenda for that meeting. Um, his presentation. Right. His presentation, okay. correct. Um, and if you'd like to add anything else, just send me an email. Um, and then we are going to be entering into executive session for negotiation purposes, not to return. So do we do a roll call roll vote? Call. Roll call vote for um, adjourning and entering into executive session? Yes. 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 Meeting adjourned.